Thank you, Prokar. At the outset, I like to thank uh, Global Robotics 2015 for their kind invitation. And the topic given to me is the role of robotic radical prostatectomy in high-risk prostate cancer. So what I have done, I will uh, give you the initial the challenges of the management of these cases. Then uh, I will share you some 10 published series which have been published in the literature. And also along with that, I will share our personal experience. So whenever we see a patient of cancer prostate, we like to do a risk stratification. And the factors are PSA, Gleason score, and clinical stage. These are the three important risk factors which are considered for risk stratification. And according to these parameters, we divide the cases into low risk, intermediate risk, and high risk group. And there are various uh, classifications by, or various associations have given these classifications of the low risk, intermediate, and high risk. So DMEGO was the first one. And the most of these series, which I'm going to talk to you, have also followed the DMEGO classification. According to them, the PSA is more than 20. The Gleason score more than 7. And the clinical stage T2, C, or 3, A. Now, this is a very heterogeneous group of the patients when we call them a high-risk prostate cancer. And there is the uh, controversy. And natural history of these cases is a very well known that the men with high-risk prostate cancer, including those with locally advanced disease, are at high risk of disease progression and cancer-specific death if they are left untreated. And with our treatment, we can definitely make their life better. But how much better we can make, that is a questionable point. Now, the uh, high-risk prostate cancer in Europe and USA, the published series is showing that there is a significant decrease in the fraction of men presenting with high-risk disease, characteristics from 40% to in between 90-91 to 14.8% in 2001 and 2002. In India, still a large number of patients are present in the locally advanced disease. And this is our experience at Medanta. We have done 580 radical prostatectomies between 2010 and 2014. This is all a collective data of our department between six surgeons who are doing the radical prostatectomy. We have low risk in 89, 15.3%, intermediate risk in 44%, and high risk where 39.9%. And the similar is the experience you heard about Jagdish, and in AIMS also I have seen that uh, still 30 to 40% of our patients are coming as a high risk prostate cancer. Now the challenges in the management. There is no consensus on the ideal management of the high-risk prostate cancer because of the different biological behavior of these cancers, depending upon what is the PSA, what is the Gleason grade and stage. Now, there is a lack of uh, staging accuracy of current diagnostic tools in spite of the multi-parametric MRI. Sometimes it is not very possible to say clearly the, whether the disease is really organ-confined or not. There is also significant differences may exist within the high-risk group because of the, uh, the, the different three high-risk features. In one patient, all the three high-risk features may be there. In some, there may be one. In some, may, there may be two. What has been found out in the literature that there is both overstaging of T2 disease and understaging of the clinical 3T disease. Up to 45% of the CT2 uh, prostate cancer are, in fact, found to be PT3 disease. And patients with CT3 prostate cancer might have up to 30% chance of metastatic disease at the time of radical prostatectomy. Whereas on the other side, we have the studies have shown that patients who are going radical prostatectomy, and uh, they have found that up to 17 to 30% ha actually have got the organ-confined disease. So this is a uh, dilemma. Now what are the challenges in the management? We have to treat the uh, local disease and also, we have to keep in mind the treatment of any microscopic metastasis likely to be present, but undetectable until the disease progresses. So once we do a surgery, then after two, three years, we start finding that they have got a biochemical recurrence and recurrence of the disease. So we have, when we are planning the treatment, we have to think both these factors together. Now, what are the treatment options? We have treatment option of surgery, which we can do a radical prostatectomy, or we can do a radiation therapy, or we can give them the hormonal treatment, or we can nowadays also has come the uh, chemotherapy. Now, as far as surgery is concerned, that I will discuss a little bit in more detail. But I like to mention here is that in radiation therapy, most of the centers, they always combine with the hormonal treatment. And the duration of the hormonal treatment is two to three years. To these cases, they start hormonal first, followed by radiation. And actually, we don't know what, what is going to help the patient whether the hormone or the radiation therapy. There is also uh, 
case report, uh, the series have come out about the new adjuvant hormonal treatment. First, you give hormone to reduce the staging of the disease, then do a radical prostatectomy. But it has been found that there is no uh, use in the longevity of the life if you do give a new adjuvant hormonal treatment. Now, the recent studies are going on about the use of the new adjuvant chemotherapy. First, you give chemotherapy, then you do radical prostatectomy or radiation therapy. So, still, the results are not out. One thing is very sure, when I see these kind of patients, I'll tell the patient day one that you will need a multi-modality treatment. One treatment is not good, eno good enough for him. Either he will have a combination of surgery, and after surgery, he may, may require radiation or hormonal treatment, and if everything doesn't work, then the chemotherapy. If you tell this to the patient, I think so their satisfaction level will be later, uh, better. They will understand that they are dealing, we are dealing with a high-risk disease, and they will need a multimodality approach. Now, the exact combination, whether which one to do first surgery, radiation, hormonal, timing, and intensity treatment continues to be strongly debated all over the world. I have heard several debates in AUA and all the, those places. But the one thing is, uh, sure, we have to also tell the patient, we have to see the age of the patient, we have to see the comorbidity, we have to see the longevity of the life, and then we have to tell the patient the, all the options, and whatsoever he decides, we should treat accordingly. Now, coming to the radical prostatectomy with extended pelvic lymph node dissection is a reasonable treatment option in patients with high-risk prostate cancer. Radical pro uh, robotic radical prostatectomy is a safe procedure. Now, with confidence, we tell our patient, don't worry, this is a very safe operation with minimum morbidity, shorter hospital stay, no requirement of any blood transfusion, and early return up to the work. Radical prostatectomy provides pathological specimen for accurate staging. When a patient undergoes radiotherapy or hormone treatment, we don't know what kind of stage he had. But after the surgery, we know the accurate staging. Then disease risk stratification is better after the surgery. And good overall and cancer-specific survival, whether monotherapy or multimodal therapy, is uh, better. Now, why radical prostatectomy first? In case of adverse, we have done a radical prostatectomy and we found that there are the adverse tumor characteristics like positive surgical margin, extra prostatic extension, or seminal vagical invasion. Then we can advise these patients adjuvant radiotherapy or hormonal treatment. When the nodal involvement is detected after surgery, we can give adjuvant hormonal treatment to these patients. Now, radical prostatectomy allows clinicians to offer targeted therapy based on accurate staging and to avoid morbidity associated along with unnecessary adjuvant treatment. As I said, radiation along with hormones, so they will have complications of both radiation as well as the hormonal treatment. And long-term complications, you all know. The optimal local control and avoid LUTs and late complications. This I have coined this terminology, morbidity of the sitting prostate. In our career of 40 years, I have seen several patients of cancer prostate coming to us for channeling TRP one time, two time, three time, four times, bladder neck contracture, and even I have to perform cystectomy in some patients because of the radiation uh, complications. So all these complications are avoided in this group of the patient. Now there has been already talked about open versus robotic radical prostatectomy, and only this is the paper which I have come across in 2014, which has shown that uh, the, there are the improved surgical margin status related to the o ORP and intermediate and high risk uh, disease requiring less adjuvant ADT and RT. Now, this again, comparison between uh, radical prostatectomy and radiation therapy, the surgical, uh, the ra radical prostatectomy group has definitely shown the better results. Now, this is our personal series between me and Rajiv Yadav. We have done 225 cases in these four years, 170 completed one year of follow-up. And out of this 170, 67, we are the high risk. We are keeping a strict follow-up in all these cases. And uh, we have different ways of doing the follow-up by telephonic call, by personal telephone, and uh, the personally coming patients at least once a year to us. And I'm happy to say that at least 90% we have got follow-up of all our patients. Now, these are the 10 series which have been published in the literature. And uh, you see that uh, most of these series are the recent ones. This is only I'm talking about the radical prostatectomy. And, uh, here is the 40% of the patient had got a clinical stage T2C, 31% has a Gleason score in our series, and 59% had a PSA more than 10. And it is more or less comparable to other series also. And here is that uh, the uh, positive surgical margin in our group was 15%, and in the literature is varying from, uh, again, 
15 to 50 percent. Then we have done lymphadenectomy in all of our cases. That is our routine protocol. In high risk, we are doing extended radical lymphadenectomy. 12 patients uh, have got, 12 percent have got a positive lymph nodes at the time of surgery. And biochemical recurrence was 38.6 percent. The point I want to highlight is here is that the 40% uh, of these patients, they did not require any adjuvant treatment after the radical prostatectomy surgery. So we have saved these patients from adjuvant therapy. And this is the functional outcome. And uh, we have uh, published our paper recently in Indian Journal of Urology. Now our continence has good. And by the end of one year, we have 95% continence. And hardly a patient has to use a single pad. And this is the complications. And we have, again, minimum 1.5% complications in this uh, group of the patients. We have not used any blood transfusion in any of our cases. We even don't do grouping and cross-checking. To conclude, uh, high-risk prostate cancer are heterogeneous group of the patients. Multimodality treatment is advisable, which prolongs the survival. Radical prostatectomy provides good pathologic specimen for accurate staging and disease risk stratification. Radiotherapy and hormonal treatment as an additional adjuvant treatment. Treatment option is to be tailored for an individual patient, which should be discussed with him. And however, now in future, we look for a very uh, better molecular markers, which can clearly define the actual behavior of these cancers, and so that we can give a proper treatment to these cases. I'd like to thank you all for your patient listening. Fantastic. Uh, while uh, Vuju gets ready, any questions for uh, Dr. Gupta? Yeah, yes, uh, Ravi. Sir, what is your uh, opinion on high-risk patients? Do you practice a new adjuvant hormonal before you take them for surgery? And how do you counsel them with regards to complications? See, normally, uh, we don't like to give a new adjuvant hormonal treatment. But some of our patients have been already started. Unfortunately, what happens in this country, they have gone undergone a TUR prostate or biopsy. And the first doctor whosoever is treating immediately give him a hormonal injection. So that kind of patients are there few. But we have not, as a routine, I will not like to give him. Do you find that these surgeries are more difficult if hormonal treatment is given prior hand? And how do you counsel them? I, I, in, I, I have not found any difference, those who have got the hormone or no hormone. But certainly, there is more difficult if they have undergone HOLAP or previous uh, TURP. Only a little bit of modification in the technique. Again, if there is a palpable disease, on that side, we are doing wide excision. We are not doing nerve sparing. You have heard other speakers. Same is our experience. On that side, we do a wide excision. Only non-palpable side, we do the nervous sparing. The unilateral nervous sparing is most of these cases have undergone. Let's say you have a patient who is locally advanced, and you have done all imaging, which shows no metastasis. Would you advise for a uh, radical prostate after hormone treatment, or you will take him for radiotherapy? No, I will take a straight away for a radical prostatectomy. So you will go through the disease? Sorry? If it's a locally advanced disease. Maybe what do you mean by locally advanced? We, I mean, do, a, is, we do a good multi-parametric MRI. Yeah. We, I do a good rectal examination. At least 50% information come with our finger only. Yes. And if there is a periprostatic extension, I will not right. like to advise radical prostatectomy. Right. So do you so consider a hormone followed by radical in such patients, or you don't? Uh, two, three patients have undergone that uh, they had a hormonal treatment. But I have found them, they came back with biochemical recurrence. In Calcutta, we've got a very high population of high-risk uh, uh, prostate cancers. But the inclination in Calcutta is that you go for uh, 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 hormone and chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Um, my question to Prokhor is, do you find, if they are treated with hormone therapy and downstaged, do you find the radical prostatectomy at that stage more difficult? And this was one of your comments when you operated in Calcutta. I, I, uh, I found the, find the tissues behave differently, but uh, I can still uh, yeah, cut through them, and I can still achieve a negative margin. I haven't Yet, to my knowledge, unless someone hasn't told me, had a positive margin in India. Curious. I thought the margin rate would be much higher. Uh, but so far, touch wood, I haven't had a positive margin in India, despite T3B, uh, sometimes even T4. I mean, these were people uh, where the disease was right up to the pelvic wall, uh, and majority of them are already on hormones. I guess, uh, you know, these patients have to wait for such a period of time that not putting them on something is probably what you find unethical, and at least you start them on treatment while they wait for their operation. Uh, Actually, again, you know, it is a late diagnosis. That's why you are seeing more in advanced stage. 
so the public education awareness program if you start i think so you will start getting early cases in my initial uh, uh, period till the robot was there in calcutta i used to get lot of patients from calcutta i have done radical prostatectomy at least on 10 patients from calcutta Thank you.